So whoever just joined, welcome. This is Federica, part of the Doc City team, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all to this live webinar, Hector Schools of Engineering and Management. Today we have connected with us John Pietro Salinas, he's a program consultant at Actor School, and we also have Maria, she's an alumna, one of the Master of Science at Actor School. I will be leaving now the floor to John Pietro and remind you all that you can type your, your questions into the Q&A box and we will be answering at the end of the presentation. John Pietro, I'll leave you the floor. Yes, thank you, Federica, so much for this uh, very nice introduction and uh, very welcome from my side. My name is Gianpietro Solinas, and I'm the program consultant uh, for the Hector School, which is the technology business school of the KIT, one of the excellent universities in Germany. Even if my name does not sound really German, I'm Italian actually, but I live and uh, was born and raised in Germany. And uh, so that's why I'm representing today the Hector School. And, and uh, I guess uh, you will get us a very close insight about the Hector School because part-time programs for professionals in Germany is very, very popular. Companies are very keen also to support financially their own employees in order to do this uh, master. And I guess this is a certain little bit different kind of master that you might uh, heard, have heard in, in the past. So let's start with the presentation. And I'm also very happy to have here one of our um, uh, very uh, famous alumna, Maria Korneva. Hello. And uh, we will also ask afterwards and have a small interview with her. And she will also give you a very deep insight uh, regarding um, all the programs and all, let's say, all, uh, all the um, events coming again, getting in and coming in at, uh, at Hector School. So uh, just one second, I have to, it's uh, now it's working. Okay, so the Karls Institute of Technology is, as I mentioned, one of the state universities in Germany and uh, is uh, since July 19th, University of Excellence. That is one of the top ranked universities in Germany on QS level. Also, we are very highly ranked worldwide. So one of the best engineering uh, universities worldwide. And you can see here a few figures. I guess the most important one is if you look into the um, employees into in institutes. So we have more than 9,600 employees at KIT and more than 6,000 only working in research um, in one of the almost 150 institutes at KIT, which is a very unique thing. Usually um, the universities are big, but not that big. Then we have a very, very big uh, research um, uh, hub at, at university. And of course, everything flows directly into lectures. And, um, and that's why the KIT is very, very popular within, uh, um, of course, within Germany, but also in, uh, in, on a worldwide scale. And of course, we have some milestones. It's a technology university. Um, uh, about energy, mobility, information, everything which is connected also in all these three uh, topics. Um, we have a, fa a few famous alumni that I also mentioned here. Uh, we have, of course, uh, Carsten Spohr, which is a CEO of Tanza. Maybe, I guess, the most important one right now is Alexander Gers, who studied, who studied a geophysics KIT and then landed up in the space a few months ago, or I guess last year it was. And so it's also very famous. And also Dietmar Hopp, of course, CEO, one of the founders, co-founders of SAP, which is one of the biggest IT companies worldwide. And it's also close by to Karlsruhe. And for all the football fans, it's also president of TSG Hoffenheim. So maybe you should know that. And uh, all these kind of alumni, beside Carl Benz, who invented the car and so on, um, all of them uh, have been to KIT before. So um, you could be the next one, famous alumni. But before that, uh, I just would give you a small insight about what is typical for um, our master. So we have um, a master, a technology master. We have six different programs. I will come uh, to it in one second. And there is also a mix as a technology comp uh, as a technology university, a mix of management and technology uh, modules. So that means that you also will learn management topics during your uh, your academic career here at KIT. But of course, you will go into deep into uh, into the technology field um, uh, related to that program that you would like to study. We have a very strong international network, so we have uh, sometimes uh, um, up to 50% of our intake is international. The other ones come usually from, Germ from companies in Germany. Um, our programs are executive, are part-time, um, so that means that uh, everything is perfectly to plan and of course you have the chance also to work beside uh, studying and of course uh, we have a technology and uh, innovation transfer this is also what i haven't what I, I i told you right now or mentioned right away 
uh, regarding this innovation and tech we have also a very strong innovation center where it comes up from the big research hub that we have and of course everything will be also flowing directly into lectures so we have six different programs at uh, our um, at our universities and uh, you have listed here, here, I will just go on as quickly into these programs, energy engineering and management. Uh, the first one uh, is, of course, uh, as the name says, strongly related to renewables and all to ec new economics coming up with renewables, because it's not only the power of energy, which is coming up. So very new topics like geothermal, PV and uh, geothermal and wind power, of course, but also what kind of challenge you have to face in future. So what kind of new business are coming up uh, if you are doing energy engineering and management. The other one is financial engineering, which is I have a strong eye on AI and on Python. That means how can I use new digitalization technology? How can I use AI in order to reduce risk management? So financial engineering, it's nothing else than technology and digitalization um, combined. And uh, this also is um, a very technological, I would say, uh, master. Information systems engineering and management is one of uh, our biggest master programs that we have with the most um, uh, students uh, in inside. It has a strong, let's say, focus on digitalization or on digital transformation in companies. It could be a product, it could be a process, but you should be enabled to uh, carry on digitalization in your company. And if you're coming from a manufacturing company or maybe from a consulting company, it does not matter. So you should have the tools in order to digitalize uh, your project within um, a company. It's a very branch-wide program, I would say. It's not really typical for one, for one branch or for one certain um, company. Management of product development is our innovation master, I would say. So you are uh, studying how can I develop a product, maybe an existing product. So how can I innovate? There's also a, a certain uh, methodology behind that, always uh, uh, in, 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 in optimization of uh, market demands, but also an optimization of techniques uh, and also what the market is requesting. Is it uh, market, uh, can, can I put it in the market? I mean, all this question you can also learn here in mentioned product development. We have uh, another program which is called mobility system engineering and management as the name says and as we are strong related to mobility here in Karlsruhe of course um, uh, we are talking about mobility in the sense of e-mobility so battery technology battery components what are the state of the art technology in this field and how is the challenge in the future so we have a very big increasing market of e models or of e uh, of battery driven cars in germany and i guess this will be also the future uh, europe wide i guess also worldwide even if it takes uh, uh, a little bit of time i agree on the other hand you have autonomous driving and system engineering which means that you can learn advanced driver assistance system systems so all the system systems which are coming up more and more as service in cars for example car to car communication car to x and so on and last but not least, production operations and management, which is our digit, I, I would always say it's our industry 4.0 master. It will take you uh, in a journey where to see how production and how supply chain globally does work in future. So um, how can I, um, how can do, can I do operations research, supply chain management, if, if we are talking about a company in a worldwide scale. So, um, so this is also, how can I use digitalization in order to make processes leaner? So always with the target, maybe still far away, but always the target, fully automated production lines or production processes or processes in, in general. That's also the main task of this program. Also a very popular, one of the biggest uh, uh, student um, uh, group is here in this program. Um, you can see here uh, a little bit our um, um, uh, uh, program by program, uh, a few topics in the management modules on the right side, because I told you we have all these six programs have always the same modules. We have 10 modules of each two weeks. I will come to that in one minute. Five management modules and five engineering modules. The management modules are always the same topic for all the programs. There's 
a slight exception for some programs, but usually all these topics that you can see on the right side of this of this uh, um, of this square is the same for all programs. On the left hand, you can see the engineering modules and all the main topics which you can find for each module. So talking about energy engineering, you see renewables, thermal energy conversion, electricity generation and energy storage. We are talking also about generation of renewables, of course smart networks and energy distribution so what does it mean we're talking about smart grids how can i distribute energy if i can collect it in summer how can i distribute in winter if we have no sun especially in the north and in germany is uh, is shining um but also energy economics what does it mean for the market uh, what kind of jobs are coming up what kind of uh, new um, companies and this is also a very future oriented um, uh, program and energy is one of the big hubs here in, in Karlsruhe, the, if you can Google it, energy2.0 uh, lab is one of the biggest uh, research hubs in energy field, which we have worldwide right now in Karlsruhe sitting and located. Let's go on with the next one is financial engineering. And again, on the third, on the left, on the right hand, you say you see the mention modules, which again has the same topics as everywhere, but uh, as all the other programs. On the left side, we have you have the topics of the engineering modules, digital financial markets, financial economics, machine learning for data-driven decision making. What does this mean? This means nothing else than how can I use state-of-the-art technology, so digitalization or maybe coding languages, in order to make decisions so how can i take away more responsibility and given it to uh, some uh, data driven uh, technology and this is also very important especially if you're working in a risk management so risk management is a very sensible thing especially in banks of or in maybe in insurances and of course using data using digitalization you can reduce your risk and see what kind of of, of value you can have afterwards Engineering aspects of financial markets, alternative data and machine learning for business application, of course, that we, there are not only certain branches where you can use it here, we are talking about a little bit globally, and all this kind of stuff, you can uh, learn it here at, uh, at financial engineering. At the first side, financial engineering does not fit maybe very well to uh, the uh, KIT, but this does is not really true because we have a very strong relation to digitalization and IT is one of the biggest hubs here in Germany is at KIT. And that's also what is driven this program. Then we have information systems engineering and management. Uh, again, on the third, uh, on the, on the uh, right side, you see the management modules and the digital uh, and, the, and the engineering models uh, here on the left side, you see digital platforms, you see software engineering, process knowledge engineering, security and privacy. We're talking about cloud, data, uh, cloud computing, big data, blockchain, but also, of course, how can I collect data? How can I distribute it? And what is the security and privacy behind that, which you also have to face more and more. I guess Maria will tell us a little bit more about that in a, in a few minutes. And uh, of course, cryptography and so on, all these new topics coming up with more and more collecting data that we have worldwide, of course. And of course, at the end, you have uh, you can choose one of the specialization. Either you can go in digital services um, or you can go in autonomous robotics, autonomous robotics, maybe more uh, feasible for those people who are working in production. So where they have really working maybe for with robotics and you have to digitalize your data in order to carry on uh, robotics or production lines. Next program is management of product development. Um, again, th on uh, the management models are the same. Engineering modules, we have integrated product development, design and validation, simulation, validation, and so on. I guess, as I told you before, this is really an innovation master. So in this engineering modules, there's a lot of methodology behind that. So how, what kind of methodology can I use? And should I, let's say, apply or maybe also, um, uh, yes, recognize if I would like to carry on innovation in a company. So if I have a product which I have to make it more mature for the new market coming up. So this is all what you will learn here. And we have a strong relation here in a, a, um, on, um, on a, uh, yes, on a hands-on project between engineering modules number one and four, you really have a robot where you're working on uh, and each intake has to develop that further year by year. And in this, uh, and this robot should automatically bring drinks from one institute to, it, to the other ones 
we're not talking about what kind of drinks. This is something which you have to figure out by yourself. But anyway, this is one of the main projects here. And you are using this case in order to carry on innovation. So how, what can I use and what, what kind of uh, tools do you have in my hand in order to carry on this? And this is also very integrated and also very interdisciplinary. We have people with a technical background. We have also people with a business background, IT background. So very, very interesting. And, um, and that's what you learn in management of product development. Next one is mobility systems engineering management. And here you can see the engineering modules number one, two, and five are the same. We are talking about systems engineering, actually. What, do, what does mean systems engineering? It's how can you use all the components that you need for your project or for your product into a system? So not only looking on detail, but how can I look globally and how can I integrate globally components into um, our mobility parts or mobility uh, um, uh, tools. And then on engineering module number three and four, you can uh, use your specialization either, as I mentioned before, battery technology. So e-mobility in the sense of battery driven cars, for example, and what is the state of the art right now. And on the other hand, ADS, Advanced Driver Assistance System. So all what belongs to assistance systems to cars. And last but not least, as I told you before, production operations and management, our industry 4.0 uh, 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 master, we are talking about production and operations management. So really operations research, how can I, how, what kind of tools do you have to make production and process leaner and faster? Um, and then of course, uh, model operations in, in supply chain, networks of supply product, global production and distribution systems, all topics which are related to industry 4.0. So how can I lean all my production chain and process chain from supplying, from quality, and also from, from the output at the end. And this is all what you are learning here. And this is also very branch wide. It does not belong also only to manufacturing companies, but also people who are working in consultancy can also uh, use this master very well. Um, I, you, see, you could see in this slides, which I did not mention before, a few international flags, actually for the programs, energy engineering and management, as well uh, as for mobility systems engineering and management, the people and the students have the chance to, to visit one module. So two weeks in Barcelona at the Ezade Business School, where we have uh, international uh, module there. And uh, uh, Ezade Business School is one of the second biggest, I guess, in Spain in business school. So the students have the chance to go for two weeks there and have a totally different approach of teaching actually, and also have uh, uh, some, um, some topics that you can uh, learn there. And as well as production operations and management product development, they also have international um, um, modules, as you can see here, uh, the Chinese flag, the, um, the KIT has a Chinese uh, research institute at Suzhou, which is a small city with 3 million inhabitants close by Shanghai. It's only two hours away from there. Um, and, uh, and the people have the chance uh, to stay in and also have a lot of excursions and see uh, what is happening there and have lecture then uh, in, in China themselves. And this is what I just here, um, uh, yes, put into a, into, a, uh, into a slide. So Zadi Business School on one hand for these two programs with renowned professors, of course. On the other hand, we have, let's say a KIT driven research campus. Many German, also Chinese people are working there on, on different researches. And, uh, and these two programs, MPD and POM, uh, you can visit there. I guess it's also a very good add-on uh, during your studies if you can go internationally. Unfortunately, Info Information Systems does not have yet uh, an international module. We are working on that, Maria, but actually this was not, was not the case when you were studying, unfortunately. But uh, I hope we can manage it very, very soon. Um, a few key facts about these programs. Um, the duration of the program uh, is more or less 20 months, can be also at the latest, uh, at the maximum two years. As I mentioned, 10 times two week modules. Within these modules, I will come back to uh, in one second to the schedule in detail. Within these modules, you have lectures and exams. We have five management modules, five engineering modules, and a master thesis afterwards. The total program costs are 30,000 euro for the whole master. So it's 7,500 euro per semester, more or less. 
um, with the enrollment fees, but enrollment fees in Germany are very low. Usually you pay 320 euros more or less per year. So I guess the most big, the biggest issue, of course, is, is are the tuition fees and your living expenses if you are coming here. And of course, the final degree is, um, although the Hector School is offering that as the business school, the final degree comes from the KIT, of course. So you will get a Master of Science with 90 CTS credits, which is the European credit system. Um, and of course, you can also, if you wish, uh, do a PhD afterwards. We always start once per year. It's always in a winter semester. This year, it will be October 3rd. October 3rd in Germany, by the way, is a bank holiday, but not for the students. So the students have to learn. And uh, whilst the other ones have a vacancy day. But anyway, this is, you have to deal with this, actually. So that's, a, that's a, uh, if you're coming from uh, outside Germany, you, you, won't, uh, you won't feel that. So anyway, everything is fine. And we have a running application process that means that we don't have an official deadline. However, I always say if you're coming from outside Europe and you need a visa, then we always recommend to apply as soon as possible because we know that for some countries, uh, visa processes might be very time consuming, some, sometimes two, three months, up to six months. And if you're really interested in, store, in studying that, apply as soon as possible in order then that you can do uh, smoothly your, uh, all your visa process in, uh, in your country. The academic requirements, and this is, I, I guess, also a, most, a very important thing for the business school in, in Germany, especially for our one, for the Hector School. So you will need, a, of course, a first academic degree, which can be a bachelor, but can also be a master if you already have one. Usually the majority has a bachelor, would like to do a master then afterwards. And what you need then afterwards is at least, so after your degree, by the way, uh, at least one to two years work experience. So you have to, once you have the final date of your bachelor, uh, let's say what it was, it would, it was September 2020, from or since October 2020, when you are starting to work professionally in a company, from that point on, the work experience is counting. So nothing which you did during your bachelor or maybe also before your bachelor. So everything what is after your bachelor, we can count for professional experience. And, and this depends on the credits that you have. For all the people who have ECTS credits, mainly those in Europe, you need at least 210 ECTS credits and then afterwards only one year work experience. But if you have 180 ECTS, so less than 210, you need at least two years work experience after your bachelor. And for all those people who are coming outside Europe, because I saw that many comes from, uh, from outside Europe, um, in, uh, I mean, Federica made this uh, task before. Uh, of course, usually we need two years work experience because you don't have easy test credits, unless sometimes your university uh, um, abroad, they have a kind of conversion table, which yes, states how much credits, uh, yes, amounts to, uh, in your country, amounts to ECTS credits in Europe. But this is some, th these are cases that we can also talk in detail. What we need is a CV, a job reference, recommendation letter, and so on. And once you apply officially online, you submit all the documents, then afterwards you will have an interview with the program director of the program that you um, uh, would be uh, interested in and you, you applied. Uh, and she or he will then have an interview with you about half an hour and will get, then give us the final go for your admission. Of course, as everything is in English, we need also um, a language uh, requirement, which is usually a TOEFL test with 90 IBT minimum score or IELTS with 6.5, but any official English test we can accept. Of course, if, you, if your education language in your country was everything in English and you can prove that, of course, you don't need any additional test. Coming back to the time structure, just to explain you how it works, you see the next uh, intake is starting uh, in October 2022. 20, uh, uh, the blue one, highlighted ones are the management modules and the engineering modules are the green highlighted ones. So the management modules are starting on October 3rd, as I mentioned before, from October 3rd on, on, until October 7th. It's the first week. We have lectures and exams, uh, lectures, sorry, not only and lectures from 8 a.m. in the morning until 5 p.m. in the evening. Afterwards, you have to learn, you have to do case studies and so on. And on the Saturday, just right away, on the 8th of October, in this case, you have the exams of the previous week. Then you have Saturday evening and Sunday off. And again, same procedure on the second week, Monday to Friday, whole day lectures. Everything is challenging enough, I would say. Uh, and, uh, and then on Saturday, you have the exams. But once one model has finished, 
then you don't have to do anything else for your studies until the following module starts. What does this mean? People who are living in Germany, like Maria did, for example, she get back to their companies and continue to work normally and came back to us once the following module starts. In this case, it would be engineering module number one in November. The international students who are not working full-time here, we, we also have a lot of them. So usually they learn the German language because they come with a student visa, they are not allowed to work full-time, but usually they work on a part-time basis. So they work on institutes at KIT, or maybe they're doing an internship in an industry. So all the international students are, are quite busy also in between modules, but you don't have to have, you don't have to face anything or you don't have to do anything for the following module. That's what I'm saying. So every module is closed in, in, in itself, as we say in German. So one you have done once, just uh, put a cross into that and then wait until the next one's starting. And that's always the same procedure. So your module is starting, the first module in October. The last module, as you can hear, see here in the schedule, is on December of the following year. So in 15 months, you have done all the modules. And then afterwards, you start your master thesis, which can be six months duration for the programs information systems and financial engineering and all the other programs you need a nine months of a master thesis duration and that means that at the latest in or at the maximum after two years you have finished your master um, we have maybe just adding one thing in november a week of crash courses that you start right away before the first engineering modules if you might so if you if you uh, you should do so but this is a recommendation which comes also from the professors Again, any questions you can also ask afterwards. And uh, the advantages of the part-time structure is, of course, that you start, in, you start in October here, you work as a part-time job, especially for international ones, of course, not really for the Germans because they are working, actually, as I told you. But for international ones, they can start with a part-time job, working student, uh, student assistant at KIT or maybe in industry. And they tr they're increasing their network, they're knowing people, maybe the chance to do a master thesis in a company, which is also very popular in Germany. If you, you can do it, of course, on a classical way at university, but also in a company and do a, and then of course, this is always the first step that you have in, 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 in companies. Very often companies who offer you to a master thesis, they're also uh, in, uh, maybe interested in hiring you afterwards. And then you can enter your job, the, your student visa, uh, can be extended after the master in one and a half year, additionally in, into a job seeking visa. And usually international students, I can see that from by experience, the majority who are staying in Germany and or, I mean, almost everyone is already working. And of course, if you wish, you can also do a PhD afterwards. The master thesis is a kind of re innovation uh, or return investment if you're coming from a company or maybe innovation for you. So it's a topic that you can choose by yourself, either as I told you in, a, in, in industry or maybe by yourself. You have time enough to talk to professors, to institutes in order to choose the topic that you wish. And then, of course, the duration depends on the program, six to nine months. And you have two supervisors from the KIT. Of course, we also have a little bit fun during the modules uh, with a lot of social events that we are doing within each module. As you can see, we have file side chats, but we have also team building events, uh, excursions, alumni networks, alumni meetings, a lot of them. Alumni meetings we have uh, each two years in a, on a bigger scale. Two years ago, we have been to Geneva. Uh, this year, no, last year, we have been to Munich at IBM. It's uh, with a lot of, uh, it's a very, a lot of fun. So with uh, also cultural and, and uh, leather, leisure activities and this kind of alumni networks, we do it on a annual basis, five or six called Stammtische, where we also meet the students in a certain city in Germany, eat something together by dinner, maybe make an excursion. And also let's talk a lot bit about the experiences and also meet also uh, other alumni. And of course, you have the chance also to live on campus. You, you can besides, uh, you can see hint, uh, behind me the castle of Karlsruhe. It's the center uh, part of Karlsruhe. Just have a look on my uh, my clock. Uh, and uh, and just in front of that is our campus. So you cannot stay more central. You have the chance to live on a campus where we have um, a single room, a single bathroom, and shared kitchen, and everything is very. Uh, uh, reachable uh, very quickly by, by food um, and, and it's not, not that far away from here. And of course, yes, that's Karlsruhe, as I mentioned before, the castle here in the, in the, mid of, in the middle of, uh, of this picture. And you can see one of the, if you go in front of that a little bit on the right, looking from the castle, that's our building. 
and that where we are also located uh, from the administration staff and where you also can live and have lectures. Of course, as you can see, it's a very green city. You have a lot of opportunities to do sports and events. Karlsruhe is a very nice, very quiet city with 300,000 inhabitants. It's not too big with more than uh, 26,000 students uh, currently. And it's a very inter international and very student-based uh, uh, city. You will see that once you walk into the city and it's a very perfect environment to study. And uh, as we are not really um, studying in a like metropole like Munich or Hamburg or Berlin or maybe New York, and I don't know where you're coming from. And uh, so it's a very nice hub and also very technical hub. So very good chances to work in Karlsruhe or in the region of Karlsruhe. Stuttgart is not far away. Stuttgart, I guess, it's the capital of the region, the most famous city, I guess, in uh, worldwide uh, here, where Daimler-Benz, Mercedes-Benz comes from, where Bosch comes from, where Porsche comes from. Uh, and of course, Stuttgart is a very important uh, uh, technology uh, city on a worldwide scale where uh, there are plenty of jobs if you would like to work here and stay here. And now I would like to introduce you to Maria, finally, uh, our special guest today who studied information systems engineering management, former it was known service management engineering. Um, she did a master thesis in machine learning technologies and mobile applications for GDPR. The compliance check, I guess she also would like to uh, um, and will also tell us a little bit more about that. And currently she is working um, as a front-end technology lead at Aleri Solutions GmbH, and this is located, I guess, in Cologne, as far as I know. Very nice city, by the way. Uh, I guess Maria can also tell you more. And yes, Maria, hello, and uh, welcome here, and uh, I'm really great to see you again. Hello, everyone. Hi, Johnny, and thank you for having me here. Yeah, I yes. think, I hope I can give some more personal touch to this program, to the to the programs and to tell a bit more, a bit more about my personal experience. Um, um, well, I mean, like you've learned some, you've you've got some information from Johnny how it works, and now I can maybe give you some idea how it feels. <laughs> so that's that's very good. Yes, tell us about something about you. I mean, your working place and and also your main task, what you're doing right now. Yeah, well, I'm working as front end technology lead uh, and front end. That was my decision because I'm kind of a front-end person. I like designing our websites. I like to see how it works. Um, I, I like to see the visual results, which come quite quickly. And what I'm doing as a technology lead um, in a middle-sized company is basically almost anything. Um, like I'm uh, accompanying the recruitment process. I'm um, sitting there and, and during, I'm, I'm there supporting both sides of the, the applicant and the company in the recruitment process. I'm working on some, um, well, pieces of text that we need for some applications uh, to close some deals. I'm mentoring my colleagues because I'm the domain expert and I'm responsible for the whole education process, um, streamlining our, uh, well, certificates, whatever we need to, um, well, to go, to, to innovate, to stay up to date, to stay in the market. So the, the variety of my tasks is really great. And that's what I like. And that's the time to pick the best one or the to decide where I'm going to go next. But this is, again, it, it kind of relates to the studies that I had. Like I studied service management engineering um, and it was the same. It was also a mixture of management tasks, a mixture and some technology tasks. So I had to, um, you know, to combine those or streamline those or just pay attention to all the, of the possible aspects of the business. Very good. So, that's so actually you're putting now. in practice what you learned here. And uh, it seems that you have a lot to do, by the way. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> that is fun. That's it's funny. Really I mean, I, as, as long as it's fun, everything is fine, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, uh, what I hear from you is also that you are really putting in practice what you also learned during, I mean, your master, not only during lectures, but also in a combination with uh, your, your fellow students, right? So. Yeah, that's true. And actually, um, well, you highlighted the management and the, IT. in my case, it was IT part, but we also had some parts of flow, like, you know, some, some introduction to law system. And I wrote my thesis in 
uh, was dedicated to the GDPR. And especially in the IT field, I still profit from this thesis because um, since I was given the chance to, to study it in, in, in more details, I now know all about those cookie banners and where to look for the decline button and there has to be one and what is the, <laughs> what is the compliance solution with what is not the compliant one, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is a very big task that uh, every company is facing right now, I guess. And yes, I can imagine. So, but uh, let me let me uh, ask you, so why did you decide to further your career with a master uh, and studying powerly at Hector School? So this is something which is not for our international guests, not very popular, but in Germany, this is, I guess, uh, also, let's say very often also, uh, how do you say, supported by companies. So why did you decide to do like this? Well, I first studied foreign languages because I'm originally from Russia. I studied there, I came to Germany and I completed my bachelor's um, thesis. And I realized that um, it's not like for me, I wanted to continue because I had a feeling that with a master um, certificate, I have a better, I have better um, chances to get a better job because usually the entry level with a master degree is uh, better paid. And it's, uh, yeah, well, it's... Uh, actually the, the a better standing however i didn't want to st study like uh, to continue like my bachelor was pretty traditional pretty theoretical so i didn't want to do that like the classical university mm -hmm. degree so i wanted to um get um well to do more practical stuff to um so i decided to combine the uh, professional uh, practice uh, like working normally at a company for a company and doing a, a studying in parallel. So that's um, why I decided to um, do this dual program or like the combination of both. And that's how Hector School came into, mm -hmm. into the picture. So especially due to this unique schedule because um, I was working at, for IBM at the moment mm -hmm. and I was looking at different um, universities all uh, quite known all quite good but the um, the majority of them were offering um mostly the remote version with saturdays or like the whole weekend mm -hmm. so yes. basically i would be working the whole week and then doing some stuff on weekday uh, weekends and um well that that's not my type of personality <laughs> i need i need some rest time um, i probably i prefer to power um, power in, give like, I don't know, 120% and then have my weekend. So that's why um, the schedule or the whole timing um, of, um, of the Hector School um, was perfect for me because um, I could focus on the, on the job and then I could switch to studies. studies. And then I just, uh, I was able to switch to, uh, like to focus on studies during the two weeks um, when we were at the Hector School. So. Actually, and this is also uh, really uh, also worth to mention that this kind of schedule with these two week modules is very particular, I would say. Uh, studying part-time in Germany is popular, but the schedule is very particular. Many, as Maria also mentioned, maybe also for the international students, uh, many part-time programs in Germany, for example, as Maria mentioned, is only on the weekends. But if you have on the weekends during your working sessions in we in within the week, you have always to do something also for your studies. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of parallel thing, right? It's a double work, uh, study and 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 work. But in our case, you have the lectures and exams within these two weeks, and afterwards you can fully concentrate on your work. And that's what Maria already mentioned. I guess fully understand this point. By the way, all the students love this kind of schedule. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and you can network, you can stay together, you can learn together. I guess this is a very big value which you have also during lectures and and did the studies meet your expectation i mean in and in, in what way is what is maybe the most beneficial part i mean you were mentioning about what you also learn in management technology so uh, what, what did you take um, um yeah more strongly into in, into your business world and afterwards um well, um, for me, it was um, exactly as I expected, because my bachelor was also a mixture of management and, and informatics. And that's why it was like a kind of logical, um, the next logical step. But for my fellows, I was more like they were coming from uh, slightly, slightly more management perspective and were having mm -hmm. uh, more IT. So they were learning more about IT. 
and the IT guys were learning more about management. So it was like a balanced um, degree afterwards. And um, for me, actually, like the um, now it came to my mind um, last year when I was appointed to the technology uh, lead, Mm -hmm. I had to apply for this position with a business canvas. So I had to do all the business planning for my technology, for my strategy, like for, for, for this particular area, all in real. So suddenly, mm -hmm. whatever we've learned in the management um, courses became the real thing. And that was the major, you know, hallelujah, insights, <laughs> and the, the so rev that's... revelation for me, like, now I'm doing this for real. This is I've heard about that. Right? <laughs> very yeah. good, very good. I guess also, you also had a few challenges that you had to overcome during, uh, because it's, I mean, it, to be honest, it's, of course, also a tough program, uh, and a tough, let's say, and uh, yes, to, to, yeah, and challenge to overcome to both, I mean, study and working. So, what is also a challenge for you? How did you feel that during your your master and during your work, actually? Well, actually, I was thinking about this question, and um, for me personally, it was not so challenging. Just because, as I mentioned, I prefer to give one hundred and twenty percent and then relax. Um, so for for other people, like for my fellow uh, um, students, it it was challenging at the times because if um, as you mentioned, you study from Monday to um, Friday, like you're sitting and having lectures, practical assignments, whatever. And then on Saturday, you have to give it back. Like you have to be able to at least to represent it, to, uh, mm -hmm. to, um, to write your exam. So there is little time to prepare. You have to do that. This is in, in, in parallel. So in, in, in our case, like we had some study groups and they formed throughout the studies. It was really funny. Like at the end, we were really <laughs> close having like nicknames. So um, Monday is always for fun you, because this is the first day you just meet, you exchange the news. Um, you maybe like we had a tradition. We went to the pub quiz Oh, very and, good. Uh, had some cocktails <laughs> afterwards. So we had like this um, Monday was always set. But then <laughs> Tuesday was for the first one, like for the ones that were unsure, um, they started to summarize things already. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wednesday was for people that were um, like Wednesday was not like the majority would start. Thursday, nobody's going out except for some <laughs> uh, some crazy guys, and then Friday, everyone is starting. Uh, like, and then then Saturday is is the exam, and afterwards you go for some brunch, whatever. So I guess crazy is, crazy guys we also had, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> and it, it develops, you know. Like at the at the end, I was one of the crazy ones. So at the uh -huh. at the beginning, I was the goody goody one. Like you know, I have to study, and then you, you develop a feeling, you know, like yes, of okay, course. you know where to start, how mm -hmm. to. I had I had my mind map technique, so I was drawing mind maps just to memorize it for like for, um, this was the better way to, to memorize stuff for me. So anyway, um, this could be challenging. That was challenging for many people to be able to concentrate to become mm -hmm. productive um, on the spot so mm -hmm. there is no time for leisure leisure there's no time for being lazy or postponing mm -hmm. so you have mm -hmm. to start quite quickly yeah very good yes that's a very interesting insight and coming up you already mentioned that also i mean away from the um, serious part and studying so you know we have also and i also mentioned in my presentation many social events uh, where we try to gather together everyone to make life also fun to know uh, each other better and uh, and it's also very popular and very known our social event did you participate did, did you like that when when you or what can you tell us about the social events right we're also i participate by by the way very often uh, so what, what did you think about that well, I'd like to highlight three of them. The first one, the one that I didn't make two, just because I, I was so like I was so tired uh, from the night before because we went out before two. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm still regretting because I think that was the best one. You've seen the picture of it with canoeing tours. So it was a boat around the Rhine with with uh, some grill party. I was like, I'm I'm still regretting that I didn't make it to it. <laughs> 
This we will do it again for you, Maria. No problem. Yes, please. But <laughs> because this is the, the third one that I, I was going to mention well, are those alumni um, meetings. So the the one in Geneva was my personal highlight too, because they were, we made it to CERN with a mm -hmm. personal, like private mm -hmm. excursion, guided mm -hmm. tour. And then uh, um, uh, we were... Um, uh, also invited to the uh, motor show, so mm -hmm. um, to the Pagani booth. So it's 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 incredible. Yeah. Like I'm, uh, I still can like I, I I'm not into the cars, but I now I can I can <laughs> you know like, uh, be proud of myself to to uh, having met this uh, made this experience. But the the one the one more that I wanted to mention was the bubble soccer. Oh, so yeah. um, I still remember this one just because I remember the train, like we had the show of introduction and the trainer said, uh, whenever you stop, stop, you lose. And I was like, what is this for? Like, why is it this introduction? It's kind of, uh, I don't know, weird. I, uh, wouldn't he, uh, shouldn't, shouldn't he say something like um, you should go right or left or do this? No, that was the only the only rule that we were given, and then I realized what he meant because, like, I, I was quite light lightweight. So whenever you stop, right. you will be bumped, and you just <laughs> you just fall fall down. And then all my ten minutes, inglorious ten minutes of playing uh, bubble soccer, was about jumping around or being pushed. By the around. way, you were not the only one. So also myself, uh, we're bumped around the fields from your fellow students, by the way. So it was really funny and also <laughs> it was hurting a little bit at the end, but it was really funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you, Maria, a lot for your, um, for your presentation and for your very uh, uh, big insights into the programs. I guess uh, we now are coming closer to the Q&A sessions at 10 minutes to six uh, to seven, sorry. And uh, here in Germany, at, uh, at least. And Federica, I would give you back the word and maybe Maybe there are some questions coming in. Absolutely. Thank so thank you so much. First, I wanted to thank you, Jean Pietro and Maria, for sharing all of these amazing insights with us. And we actually collected some questions while you were while you were presenting. So Antonio is asking us if it's competitive to get in and if with the COVID situation, the classes, if they're all back in presence. And in case, for example, you're currently working remotely for your company, if in that case you will still have to move to Germany or, for example, at the beginning you can work from home, studying from home and then maybe adjust to the situation later. Um, of course, for the Corona situation, Right now, due to Corona, we always have, or not always, but uh, at a certain uh, at a certain point, we had to change into online modules. Of course, we were not able to have students uh, offline on site, but this is going to change very soon, as soon as we are able to have all lectures again offline. And you will see this is the most beneficial part when you come here. Of course, right now, uh, also in Germany, the figures are quite high, even the hospitality hospitalization rate is going down uh, by day. So as similar as in many countries in Europe, um, and I guess that uh, from March and April go on, we will have again offline courses. And what we suppose and what we highly assume is when the next intake is starting in October, then we will have uh, again all offline courses. Of course, we don't know what happens in December. Maybe there's a new variant coming from, from everywhere, which we cannot see and, uh, and, and, and realize now. But I guess uh, this will be not happening anymore and we will go back to normality. And coming back to the question of the work. So, I mean, for international students, it's quite difficult. Of course, if they, I mean, potentially, they can also go back to the countries in between modules, if this is possible. We also had some very rare cases in, 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 the, in the past where someone was traveling from Brazil back and forth, for example. This is also possible. Or maybe someone is working for the Brazilian company in Germany remotely. This is also possible. Um, of course, this is something which the student has to figure out by themselves. But uh, the courses are offline in, in Germany. So there is no online version as long as we don't have COVID. Okay, that's, I guess, the, always uh, worth a mention. But how they're working, actually, this is something which they can find a deal with their companies. We also had some international companies who were working remotely from Germany for their companies abroad. So this also could be the case. Uh, and this is up to them. I mean, uh, there's always and everything is possible. And regarding the competitive, so if there is any sort of, even maybe some advice that you can give in order to, you know, make a good application or to get prepared. 
Um, Maria, what do you, do you want to answer that, or maybe should I want to answer that? Because you applied, uh, is there some advice that you can give, or uh, what, what do you Absolutely. think? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Um, actually, I would I would suggest to apply even if you're not putting, not hundred percent sure that everything fits because um, it's the you can discuss it and um, the team of the Hector School is always keen on finding some compromise or some the, the solution that fits best everyone. So just uh, speak up, um, um, contact Johnny or uh, Yedena and um, well, and then you can see what what you can do all together. Mm -hmm. That's right. We are not very strict and strong. We have a kind of holistic approach, as we say in Germany. So holistic ap application process. As Ma Maria mentioned, not everything has to fit 100%. Of course. I mean, why should it do so? Otherwise, uh, you should not uh, do a mass anymore, right? So everything is fine, I guess. But that doesn't mean that it's not like you don't you shouldn't take it serious because if you like if if you just hope to pass through and then survive somehow these studies are challenging so if you are not sure if this is for you if you are fit um I, I, I was talking about just some formal criteria you know like number of these uh, um or, or that but if you are you should be fit um in your studies or in your mind in your brain whatever to um master the um the program so mm -hmm. absolutely thank you um speaking about also application we had um Hamey and also andre asking us about um sort of some sort of scholarships or like uh, tuition fee waiver if there is like a dedicated uh, um, place where they can look at in the on, on your website or any sort of advice that you can give on this. So at Hector School, we don't offer any scholarships. Uh, so we don't have it uh, within usually German, as I mentioned before, German companies, they support financially their own employees and they do that in order not to uh, lose them. Uh, that's the typical, typically uh, German politics, right, and strategy. Uh, but there is on our homepage a list of uh, scholarships uh, providers, which are usually German, sometimes also international ones. Uh, we have also some ones in, in, I guess, from from Mexico or from Ecuador or whatever. And of course, they can apply, and we don't have any influence in the final decision. But of course, they can apply wherever they want. So this list is on our homepage. And, uh, and feel free to do everything you, you need in order to, to do the scholarship, but not from the Hector School. This is something which we don't offer. Perfect. So yes, I mean, if you're looking for absolutely to, to have a look. Um, another question before, actually Maria said, even if you don't tick all the boxes, you know, don't uh, um, still put an application through and speak with the team. So the asking in this case, if you also accept students with little work experience, and another question is, uh, if you personally think if a part-time master is better than focusing on a year master, so what, what do you think would be a good option for a student? Uh, sh should Maria answer this? this? Maybe Maria can tell maybe her experience because, I mean, you did decide exactly. to have a part-time master, so maybe it's good to hear if you, you know, what was your outcome? And actually, since you're answering this, you're also asking us if it's hard to manage work and studying at the same time. Well, I start with the last question. For me, it was uh, quite easy to manage uh, working and studying because it was separated in time. So I had to focus on one thing at a time. And that's why it was okay. It was a bit hard sometimes to say, no, I'm going to stay away from, from the job for two weeks. Not an, I'm not going to answer this call because <laughs> I've uh, warned my colleagues. I am on my studies. So um, that was maybe the, the only tiny part, but actually was quite good to combine. And the first question was, what was the outcome of what? I didn't, I didn't really So that. basically, if um, part-time master somehow is better or, you know, rather than choosing a one-year full-time. So maybe what was your advice in terms of how it benefits your career or your studying? Oh, well, uh, since I chose this way, it was the perfect one for me because um, I wanted to choose to get as, as much practical experience as it was possible. So actually, and I hope it stays, it stays here, like when you apply for the next job after you finish the studies, you can always say, I was working like 
of, I was working full time. I was given a contract by IBM, and um, in this contract, they were just releasing me for the time for studies. But I was able to say, like, look, I'm a full, I, like a fully fledged employee. So it was not like I'm I'm a working student something. It was just, you know, it was a normal, formal uh, work experience. And you won't get it if you do the master full time. Um, and that's why I decided to do this this way. Um, of course, you have to pay that to 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 um, to. Uh, you know, to pay the price of not um, having this crazy, the, the most craziest life of students, but usually <laughs> you have it when doing your bachelor thesis. So for master, I'd say it's it's like a, the next step to the uh, job market. So it's it's fine to have the social events and be like, you know, crazy in the first half of the week. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Jampiet, if there is anything else you want to add, also maybe on the work experience. So let's say you have a little work experience. Can I still put an application through? Uh, so the work experience, I mean, what doesn't mean little, uh, little is could be one year and it could be enough, actually, uh, because it depends on the credits, as I mentioned before. So the formality of the requirements have to be strict because, of course, we cannot, so we cannot, uh, um, um, we cannot admit people, for example, who have only an internship while they were doing the bachelor. So this is not possible. There is a strict line in part-time and executive master programs in Germany. You need work experience after completing your bachelor. That's a must. And now we can talk about at least one year, depending on the CTS, two years. Uh, but if someone is someone, let's say, is going to finish their studies in, in September this year and would like to uh, study at Hector School um, just right away in October of this year, this is not possible. So they need the work experience. And, uh, and now little is a big range. Um, so one year for me, it's not really a lot. So I guess always if someone is interested in doing a master on a part time basis, then I guess and he chooses to come to Hector School, what, what I hope, of course. Then, of course, you can do a bachelor, finish in September, and then everywhere you are staying right now, apply for a job. We need a proof of that. And then say, okay, I'm working here for one year. And in one or in two years, I am able, and I would like to do this master in mobility system, for example, at Hector School. And you can prepare for yourself, right? But the work experience is mandatory. So we are not able to keep people or to take people right away after the bachelor. So this is not possible. Perfect, thank you. Another question from Luana. So she says, um, do I have to learn Germany or would be okay with the English for the course, but mainly also I would say to live in Germany? Mm, good question. So for the course, you don't need German at all. So of course you need English and you have to prove this, but usually all, I guess, all get your guests and participants can speak English very well. Um, German, I mean, maybe also Maria can answer this. Maria speaks of course perfectly German um, but um, I guess it helps of course there are some companies where you don't need German I mean uh, at, at, le at, at least at the beginning of your work because their companies of course they're very international in Germany um, but I guess always helps once they're here in Germany I always recommend to also learn German at a certain point because then the interaction and the speech in between colleagues in German companies are still German I mean I speak also German with the, uh, Maria or with Elena with my colleagues even if we can speak English uh, uh, very well, but um, I guess this is normal, right? Um, it helps. I would say it helps, uh, but it's not a must at the beginning, of course. And maybe I'm sure that once you move there, there might be some courses that you can attend and, you know, probably leaving also, you know, there you'll be able to meet people and, you know. Of course, uh, of course. I mean, you're living in Germany and you are uh, uh, surrounded by Germans. <laughs> so you have to, you can speak and you can, and you can learn German actually. And this is also what I say, if you would like to learn that language, you have to stay in the country, right? At KIT, you can learn the, there are uh, Sprachenzentrum, it's called, uh, um, yes, it's a language center at, uh, it's an institute at KIT where you can also learn German for the international students um, and uh, and but also they have also kind of other language institutes in Karlsruhe where you should learn but living here of course it's it's easier to learn German because again you get in touch with so many people just if you if you go to the supermarket you know you learn step by step I have to say our international students not Maria again because Maria 
could speak very well German at the beginning, but many international students who came here without any word in German, uh, I know many people who speak very well right now. So after two, three years, mm, they also have a kind of accent of this region, I have to say. So uh, it, uh, it also makes some, <laughs> makes more similar <laughs> to us. <laughs> Thank you. Um, coming towards the end of our presentation today, I wanted to thank Jean Pietro and Maria for their time. Super hard to try to summarize everything in an hour. You did an amazing job, but I wanted to ask if there was anything else that you wanted to share with our audience today. Any, you know, any advice or anything that maybe there wasn't time to 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 talk about. So anything. Mm -hmm. um, Maria, would you like to give also an advice to our prospective students? Well, maybe kind of a philosophical one, like just uh, do it and um, go to a foreign country. Like um, I'm from Russia, so I moved to Germany and, and this was the best experience in my life. And this is something that accompanies you like you, you, you owe it if you if you've done it, and that's a huge step and it's a scary step, but it's the one that enriches um, your life for the whole life. So very good. Yes, I fully agree, Maria. I really fully agree. Just do it. Germany is uh, a very international uh, country. Uh, you will meet people from all over the world here. It's uh, um, also warm people you can find here uh, and uh, very international one. And I guess uh, if you would like to study technology, just think about is part-time that what I would like to do? If would I risk to work and study at the same time? Uh, is this step worth? I guess, yes for you guys if you're coming and if you would like to do further education in in technology and there's no better place in doing that at KIT I guess in Germany and uh, just do it we are really uh, uh, looking forward to welcoming you soon and um, and uh, you will uh, uh, take a lot of benefits then Thank you. Just wanted to add that we will be sending you an email right after this event. As you can see, there is an open house uh, for February the 25th. We will be sending you all the details. So there will be more time for you to get to know in details the programs and ask specific questions because, of course, each of you might have a different background, different history and want, you know, to be shared with the program consultant. And as you can see there, there are John Pietro and Yelena's contact details. We will be sending you also an email so we can follow up properly with each of you and answer any sort of question that you might have. So thank you so much, John Pietro and Maria, for your time. All of you for staying connected and for a valuable question. And we look forward to seeing you soon then. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you. Thank bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.